Welcome back to another edition of Force Friday, where we talk about Star Wars theories, characters, concepts, comparisons, analyzations, collectibles, and more. And today we're going to talk about S.H. Figuarts and an element of their contribution, or perhaps lack thereof, regarding the Star Wars 112th line. Now, this is part one of what I think is going to ultimately be a three-part series regarding S.H. Figuarts and their Star Wars license. I can't promise that they'll all be back-to-back. I can't promise that they'll all be immediate. To be fair, I can't even promise it'll be three parts. You know what? I'm just not going to make any promises is what I'm going to do. But what I can tell you is that this is part one of more. And I want to have this conversation mainly because of how much it bothers me. When one is an S.H. Figuart Star Wars connoisseur, as I can assure you I am, you know the pain and struggle of figures being revealed and never seeing the light of day. I'm not sure that S.H. Figuarts or Bondi has this issue amongst their other lines. But what I do know is that they certainly have it with their Star Wars line. Darth Maul was the figure that got me into this line. I wait with a ravenous appetite for every figure they put out. Not all have been home runs, but I'm not sure I've ever had one failure. Just complete and utter failure. But some have obviously been better than others. If I had to pick out what has been their failure, that failure would be that they have revealed a ton of figures that they have not released. Now, it's very natural to want to keep on and hold hold on rather to hope regarding this topic because every now and then they have revealed a figure and long periods of time have passed and eventually they have released it. So there's nothing wrong with assuming that perhaps these figures will be released. I for one definitely err on that side as I like hope, especially in regards to this franchise and especially in regards to this line. But either way, we're going to talk a bit about them and we're going to talk about them as they relate to the Black Series. We're going to start with the reveals in December of 2017 at Tokyo Comic-Con, where we saw a slew of unreleased prototypes. There were a metric ton of astromechs, six total. And while we're on that subject, that is something I struggle with a bit from this company, and not just from this company, but kind of in general, is it's such a repaint fodder kind of thing. It's so easily done. It does seem cheap. It does seem like you're bleeding the fandom dry. I don't mind one every once in a while, but when I saw all of these get prototypes at once, I was like, well, dear God, if these things come in at 70 bucks, a piece after shipping, this thing is going to kill me. So if I had to pick some that I was somewhat relieved didn't happen, it certainly would be these. Now this is going to ruffle a few feathers, but it also is how I feel about the three ranked clone troopers from Attack of the Clones. Look, I love clones as much as the next guy. I love troop building as much as the next guy. But when we start talking about figures at this price point with just small changes to old molds, it does start feeling like you're bleeding me. Every once in a while, cool. As a matter of fact, cool and the gang. But when I saw all of this kind of back-to-back, it was a bit alarming. But then we got some better stuff. A C-3PO from Attack of the Clones. The 112 scale is lacking 3PO's from the prequel era in a serious way. All three designs of 3PO from those movies are distinctly different and deserve to have their own placement within the line and within our shelves. So that's one I'm super excited about, or at least was excited about the prospect of. But for every one thing that we got there, we got a ton of stuff that was kind of less exciting. Back to the clone astromech discussion. We got a red striped security battle droid and a battle droid commander. Once again, I like troop building as much as the next guy. I like battle droids as much as the next guy. I'd like to build an army of them as much as the next guy. But the Hasbro price point certainly becomes more alluring for figures like this. And I say this as more a fan of the SHF line than the Black Series line. And I also say this as a person that enjoys both lines. And as a person that enjoys both both lines, stuff like battle droids, I'd much rather flesh my collection out with at the $20 range than the $60 to $80 range. Moving on, Queen Amidala, a figure that we definitely still need, that I definitely want, that I was super uber excited about when I saw. We haven't seen a whole lot in regards to this since. We also got Finn as a stormtrooper from the beginning of The Force Awakens. And look, I actually want more Finn figures, but I don't necessarily want that figure. Once again, you're relying on an old mold to get you through with a new head, whereas I would prefer that they just do a Finn figure, and I'd buy one from each movie of the sequel trilogy. But it's something else we didn't get, and it was around the same time that Mafex had produced one as well. They also showed off a Force Awakens Ray from Jakku and from Octu. 
neither of which we've gotten, and the Mafex one still stands on my shelf as my current representation, which is ultimately fine, but I definitely would be in for both, especially the Octu one. But then we got one that to this day, I think I might be happy they never really made, and that is Jabba the Hutt with the segmented tail. This thing looks like the prizes that you won at Chuck E. Cheese with like a couple tickets, like you did really good in ski ball, and now you got yourself a couple tickets and you buy one of those snakes and you hold the tail and you kind of move the wrist and the snake moves back and forth on a series of segmented pieces. This is how this tail looked. It never looked professional. It always looked off base and the Hasbro one I think blew it out of the water even back then. Now, a lot of those figures that were revealed alongside these did go on to release. Count Dooku, Episode 3 Anakin, A New Hope Leia, and Obi-Wan. But also The Force Awakens Han Solo, which saw a release this year. So there is reason enough to hold on to hope. Now, let's move on to May of 2018, where we got an onslaught of brand new and never revealed figures. A clear blue version of Obi-Wan as a Force Ghost. Once again, Milk and the Cow. This one's a little bit different because it is kind of a different representation of a main character, so I'm a little bit more on this, but now we have the Black Series one, so now I'm less interested in it. Funny how that works. An Utapau clone trooper and a Shock Trooper. Once again, 2% fat or that whole milk is definitely coming from that cow, and they're getting their money, or at least we thought they were because these never saw the light of day. And the Shock Troopers, I would have definitely gone in on. Han Solo and Carbonite, which I would have bought then, but now, with the Black Series one coming, I probably won't. They showed some Jawas, which once again, I was excited about then, but now, with a $20 option, I'm less so. Of course, they had more Troopers, a New Hope version of the Storm Trooper and Sand Trooper, which I probably would have gone in on, but I would have done so kicking and screaming and complaining about it on the internet. Lastly, they had two figures that I was super excited about, and I'm still waiting to see. One is their Wicket. I want to build this Ewok army so bad, and I just need them to give me an excuse to do it. Them or Hasbro. And also Jar Jar Binks, which I really want, and I feel like we really need. But nobody has taken a stab at it. However, there's rumors now, and pretty much confirmed rumors, that Black Series has one in the works. But theoretically, I feel like Shelves could survive with two Jar Jars. He's in enough scenes where it makes sense enough to split them up. Now, once again, some of the figures revealed here have since gone on to release. Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, Crate, Luke Skywalker, and prequel Yoda. Once again, lending some hope that the rest of these guys may see the light of day. But it's also worth noting all three of those characters are A-list characters, certainly in a way that Jawas and Wicket are not. And the other figure that needs to be included amongst those mentions is the Emperor and the Royal Guard, which did go up for pre-order. Once again, an A-list character, and then troop building. Makes sense. Now, in that same year, in December, once again at the Tokyo Comic Con, they revealed more figures. And with that, more figures that we ultimately did not receive, or at least haven't as of right now. They revealed Snowspeeder pilot Luke Skywalker, which, once again, seemed exciting then. Now, exciting, but not as exciting as it would have been then, because we have the Black Series coming, and actually on many retail pegs right now. Dagobah R2-D2, same exact scenario, my friends. And this is the breadcrumb trail that I'm laying down to get to a point later on. And they also revealed a General Grievous, which does still look like a huge improvement over the Black Series version. And with this Grievous thing, I also want to point out, now we have two options for Grievous already. We have the Bondi Model Kit option, and we have the Black Series option. Now, I am positive, especially with Bondi's history and mech stuff, that this Figuarts Grievous will blow these others out of the water. However, at the same time, we have fairly nice and affordable versions already ready and available. Where does the supply demand end up? And I say that as an SHF fan. And then our last set of reveals once again come at the Tokyo Comic Con in November of 2019, where SH Figuarts revealed several new figures from the Rise of Skywalker and the Mandalorian. They revealed five of the six knights. For some reason, Aplek, I think is his name, whatever, the one that Hasbro made, but not for the Black Series, for the Vintage Collection, was left absent. The knights that Figuarts revealed, Ricardo, Keurig, Keurig, let's just call him Keurig, Trudgeon, which I think is the one that Hasbro did for Black Series, Usher, yeah, and Vickrel. From the Mandalorian, we saw a Remnant Stormtrooper, once again, 
IG-11, which is smart because you can retool that one, and a repaint of their previous Scout Trooper with speeder bike set, now with the satchel bag for Baby Yoda. Well, mainly for Baby Yoda abuse, so you can punch a baby frog in his head repeatedly while making perhaps fourth wall breaking jokes regarding your aim. So I say all that to say this, there's two big factors at work here. One is their tendency to lean on two avenues, troop building or A-list characters, both of which the financial motivations I think stand out and are clear. The second thing that stands out is as Hasbro improves at a cheaper price point and is cranking three to four waves out a year, the allure of some of the more expensive B-list, C-list, D-list characters from this line is going to become less enticing. So much like we've seen with third-party Transformer companies in the past, I think that the standout message here is don't show all your cards until you're ready to play the game. If you know that a figure is coming, reveal it. Reveal it, promote it, market it, roll it out, and produce it. Depending on where you are in your phase of research and design, hold back because there is something going on between the license holders regarding 112 scale production. I think it's obvious when we don't see SH Figuarts showing off their Star Wars 112th line at toy shows in America, but we do see them showing off their Marvel line at toy shows in America, and Hasbro has license to compete with both, that there's obviously something going on. So if there is competition, once again, I think it's healthy. Once again, ultimately, I think the fans win. Why? Because... No, I have an answer. I'm just kidding. Because look at the improvements the Black Series has made. Those improvements don't happen without that competition, if you want my opinion. So I'm all about it. But I really enjoy a Figuarts product. I really enjoy a Black Series product. I think most of us collect both. But if SH Figuarts wants to hold a footprint in the American collector shelf, they're going to have to start producing more of the items that they're teasing. Because if they don't, Hasbro will. Now, some things are always going to play out in SH Figuarts' favor. For instance, any a list faced character. But if SH Figuarts puts out that Shock Trooper now and Hasbro releases a Shock Trooper now, I'm not saying that the SHF won't be successful, but I am saying it won't be as successful as it would have been prior to the Hasbro release because that $20 option is certainly not a bad option. And just to reiterate, I am saying this as a fan of both lines. Nothing would make me happier than to have more product from each because I'm also at my heart just a fan of this franchise. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.